Today I'm going to talk a little bit about my earthlight trees as they are quite an important part of my work and I've hung two of them here. This one is called the changeling and this one over here is called when the woodland awakes. This is one of my latest pieces of work. Now anyone who's familiar with my work will know that my earthlight trees are a very big ongoing series of paintings for me where I depict trees, forests, woodlands all glowing with their own earthlight energy life force. And sometimes this is one tree on its own as here or sometimes trees going along a lane as in this piece of work. But wherever it is I try to depict the light emanating from the base of one particular tree or a small group of trees. Now all of my earthlight trees are imaginary, they're totally made up, they don't exist anywhere. And I actually call them my earthlight trees, this, this series of works, quite simply because they always depict the light from the earth coming up through the trees. But there is actually one piece of work that I did call earthlight trees and that's this one here. And originally in this piece of work, I was going to have two trees opposite each other, forming a kind of arch. And then I changed my mind and decided that I wanted the trees alternately along a stony pathway. Now, the stony path is something that often features in my work, and it's actually a bit of a recurring theme for me. And it symbolizes lots of things. But the stony path quite often symbolises life and our journey through life. And the stony pathway, it appears again in this piece of work when the woodland awakes. But this time the pathway leads you into the picture towards what looks like a little dark doorway. And I really do like to do this with my work. I like to invent pathways, portals, gateways, doorways. And I really also wanted the, the earth light to be very gentle, very faint, almost as though, you know, the woodland was just waking up. So quite a sleepy light. And the lovely full moon behind the trees. The moon is also often a feature in my work, especially my earth light trees. But in the earth light tree pictures, the, the main source of light is always from the trees themselves. And this is another one of my stony pathways, this time no moonlight at all. And this one is called Ethidwyr, it's one of my tree spirits. And I suppose in a way, my earthlight trees are quite strongly connected to the tree spirits of folklore. And of course trees have always featured very heavily in folklore, particularly British folklore. You know, one thinks of all the wonderful tales of forests, enchanted places or dangerous places. Now, when I'm painting landscape, I do always say that I like the landscape to take the central role to be the main character, even more so when I'm painting my earth like trees. And I want them to be a character almost as though they're a figure, a person. And sometimes I even portray them as though they were a person doing something. So sometimes this is kind of almost suggested in the titles of my work. Things like this one, The Invitation. And in this piece of work, the trees on one side of the pathway are inviting the trees on the other side of the pathway to something. I'm not quite sure what, maybe a tree party. I don't know what trees invite each other to. But um, this is actually also a very large piece of work as well. It's about four or five feet wide. And this one here is called The Meeting. And in this one, I wanted the trees to be, you know, be like a little group of friends huddled together as though they were having a meeting, you know, a catch up, a chat. I have to admit, I am one of those people who chats to trees, I talk to trees. I talk to all sorts of things, I talk to my horses, cats, dogs, flowers, but I do talk to trees quite a lot. And I have always felt a very strong connection with trees and woodlands and the landscape in general. 
Maybe that's just growing up in the countryside. I was actually a very small child when I first started painting these earth-like trees, these illuminated trees. Though then I probably perceived this light as a kind of protective force around the trees. I do seem to remember a neighbouring farmer cutting down a lovely old oak tree and it really, really upset me. So maybe that's where all of these earth-like trees come from. Maybe it just traumatised me. And as I was growing up, I did become more and more interested in trees. I learned about trees, I read about them, and I started to read quite a lot of folklore and mythology. A lot of folklore surrounding trees in particular, I found that really fascinating. And all of a sudden, my earth-like trees seemed to make total sense. And this particular tree here, the changeling, in a way is a little bit of a reference to the fairy trees of folklore. You know, the idea that there were these special magical trees that could, you know, they could change themselves into other things. They could possibly even move. And when I was doing this tree, I really did want it to be quite a quite a dark, powerful tree. It is quite a dark autumnal tree spirit and there is a lot of darkness around it in the top of the tree and then this gold earth light coming up through, through the tree. And I do like to explore the idea that the earth does have this other, you know, darker, lesser known side. You know, maybe one that our ancestors were more aware of. And I suppose it is most obvious in my earth light trees. This is another uh, tree spirit, this time a tree spirit of the spring. And this one is called Bethan Igert, the fairest of greens. But this time, no stony pathway, no moonlight, just the, the tree on its own. As I said earlier, all my earth light trees are imaginary. They don't exist anywhere, they're totally made up. They only exist in my head until I put them down on canvas or paper. But I can always see exactly in my head what I want and then I have to try and get that, take it down, put it on paper or, or canvas or whatever, capture it and make it real. Now, describing earth light is a little bit more difficult because it's quite a hard thing to sort of pin down. I suppose the best way to describe it would be to say, or to explain it, would be to say it's a kind of, it's a kind of physical or visual interpretation or manifestation of something which is perhaps more spiritual. You know, the idea that the earth has, or, or, or nature, has this power, this energy that perhaps we aren't as aware of as we once were. And I do try to capture this in my work, this, this otherworldly feel, you know, the, the world that maybe you can glimpse out of the corner of your eye, but then which vanishes when you tend to look at it face on. I will probably always paint my earth like trees because in a way they're kind of part of me and at some point I'll chat a little bit more about them, about some of the others because there are very very many of them but for now thank you again for joining me and hopefully I will see you soon. Okay bye bye.